What is going on, everybody? This is Lack of Flippers, aka SCP CRNP, and how you doing today? I hope you're doing well. Thanks for joining us on our semi weekly talk show where we go over basically the cultural developments in the containment fiction space and we take your calls live if you will the phone number is on the ticker at the bottom of the screen if you're listening the number is 316-444-3115 again 316-444-3115 and you can call that during the portion of our show that will allow it that is going to be the twitter portion so I hope you've been doing well. Um, once again, we, we try to meet every two weeks for this uh, because it's just a lot of fun. And uh, to catch up on what's going on, the space is, as you know, a very exciting place. There's always something going on. And so it's uh, a good time and a good frequency, I think, to kind of get everything uh, together. So <clears throat> we will be going through, as we always do, our local news first so let's pull up what we got here i'll set this onto the screen local news all right and uh so we'll start just with what's going on in our immediate space and when i say our i mean uh society for containment fiction of course who else could i be talking about this has been a very exciting time for us uh the better part of last month we had our first writing contest this was called IndieCon, uh, stands for Independent Containment Fiction Contest, so IndieCon uh, 2022. So we had this uh, nice little splash page to our website. Uh, you could go in, uh, check out the entries that we had. Uh, this was an interesting contest, I think, uh, first of its kind, very unique, if I do say so myself. So let me just read to you what this was about. So IndieCon was the first writing contest featuring a platform independent approach to containment fiction. Entrants could choose whatever format they wish, whether existing, SCP, RPC, or their own variety, such as uh, a proprietary version of the format. The authors of the entries were not revealed until the end of the contest in order to help establish quality-centric writing uh, and voting. The winner was awarded $250 in prize money. The winner took all. And very strictly, the contest's themes was statues. And if you'd like more information about why, and just in general about the, uh, about the contest, you can check that page out on our website and read all about it. Let me turn up these grooves. Oh, yeah. Just a little bit. <clears throat> now we're cooking. And then, of course, uh, we do have to congratulate our winner. Uh, voting took place this week, and those were tallied uh, and finalized on Friday, um, really Saturday morning. And so the winner of that was Salt Blossom with an entry titled The Sword of Everyone's Hatred, uh, which uh, I will hopefully be doing a more in-depth review of at some point, but I really, really recommend you go check that out. There's two ways you can do it. If you're on the entries page on our website, you scroll down, you can see all the entries. I was very, very pleased. We had a healthy, healthy amount of entries uh, eight total. Uh, that's more than I could have asked for. I'm very, very happy about that. So thank you to everybody who participated in this uh, contest and made it really a success. So it was just the first um, ribbon cutting of this kind of thing. We'll have several other contests like this in the future. But the, the winner is highlighted here, you can see, uh, and all the authors have been unblinded. So you can check out who, who wrote what. Oops, except for this one. <laughs> I got to fix that. My bad. My bad, Harmony. That's Harmony's article. <laughs> All right. Uh, anyway, you can click on the icons here to check out the entries. But one of the perks of winning this contest is that uh, the winner got a dedicated post to the magazine. Okay, so here it is right here. It's been sort of dulled and dusted up a little bit uh, with uh, just a little bit of visual pizzazz. So not much, you know, just enough. Um, so check it out. This is just a really, really good article. I was so, so happy of the quality of the content that we got uh, submission wise. So uh, if you haven't checked these out, it might be a good time to, because uh, in about a week, we're going to be flooded with new articles, particularly uh, on the SCP side of things. So uh, while things are calm and slow, it might be a nice time to check out uh, just a little, little different uh, producer of containment fiction. Um, we got some really interesting entries. Uh, we were uh, able to allow for all different kinds of formats. We got uh, in files, we got P, uh, PDFs. We got HTML, um, we got .rar, .rars, uh, zip files, uh, just a lot of interesting and creative stuff that went on in this contest. So definitely, um, definitely recommend you check this out. And once again, congratulations to Salt Blossom 
uh, this is a, a, a tremendous article. It's quite, quite an achievement. Uh, so definitely, definitely check that out. And then moving on in local news, I do want to make sure that I advertise ourselves in this way. Uh, Friday night we did a long stream. This one's about three, three hours and ten minutes long. This is a weekly thing that we do uh, where we take a look at all the SCP articles in the week and we summarize them and then we sort of synopsize them and give a little bit of review while we're at it. Why not? And so this one um, covered this week. Uh, you know, it's, it's just a nice sort of hopefully educational thing. Um, it really, if you've ever heard of that SCP team that tries to do crit, like the site crit team, where their responsibility is to go through all the posted articles and like leave some quality crit, quality feedback. Um, that's really what this show is. It, it, in fact, it sort of achieves that in sort of a, a one-person show and, and maybe a two-person show when Harmony shows up and helps too. So if, um, if that's something that you've always wanted to see happen, it happens every week uh, just on the SCP Meta Twitch, which is our Twitch um, here at the here at the magazine. So check that out. That happens every Friday night. Uh, this is the one from uh, this Friday. I thought that went pretty well. Um, and uh, what we also do is um, we do basically a tier list of all the articles in the week. So this just to kind of show you, this is what it looked like this week, which I think is a pretty good spread, don't you? I mean, it's nice and symmetric. Look at that, beautiful. So no one can say that I'm not fair and balanced. But uh, we put these into categories, any SCP that's posted to the week, we, we categorize them from this tier. Weightlifting the whole SCP wiki is the best category you can be in. A ray of Hope is the next one, which is above average, but not excellent. Average is meh, okay? And then one below that is so bad I didn't finish it, which we have to allow an, an exit for ourselves. We can't be um, purist when it comes to completionist philosophies when reading these SCPs. They can get quite long and quite bad at the same time. And then the very last one is actively lowering the bar, so making things worse for the wiki. And we'll get into a conversation about that a little later on in the show when we look at some Twitter commentary that has happened in the past two weeks since we've seen each other. I hope you've been doing well, by the way. I certainly have. All right, and then I definitely wanted to shill this. This is something that is just so up and coming. If you haven't checked this out yet, uh, you really need to. Obviously, I'm biased. Uh, this is Harmony's uh, TikTok, which was made not that long ago, and uh, seems seems to be accelerating uh, up into the stratospheric numbers here uh, at times. Uh, but besides the numbers, uh, this is just really, really quality content. This is hilarious. Uh, Harmony has uh, such a skill at this and such an understanding and uh, competency at the space that uh, provides her and allows her a lot of great commentary that she can make into funny things and entertaining things. And all of these are, are quite entertaining. Very, very funny. It's almost like Radiger, just a little more sophisticated. So check that out. Uh, I think that this is a... Uh, this is something that people uh, on TikTok and the SCP space particularly are going to be a little nervous about. This is really, really, really good stuff. So check that out for sure. All right. Uh, so now that's basically all the news I think we have uh, to talk about. So we'll spread out a little bit. We like to go for our global news next. And of course, this isn't really global. This is just global in the relative sense. We're just looking at containment fiction, of course. So uh, let's see what's going on in this space uh, in the last couple of weeks. The first thing to note is uh, contests. You know, contests um, used to be sort of a rare thing, like contest season, uh, but lately, and it seems almost perpetually, uh, these contests really have come in a steady stream. So we kind of phase in and out a little bit, but there's usually always one contest that's going on. We just had ours. Uh, and then, of course, we don't need to announce this, but the SCP Wiki uh, has, um, has their contest uh, that's officially happening right now. Um, entries will be opened up in about a week from tomorrow, so uh, we're kind of bracing ourselves for that um, with respect to that show that I just told you about. That's going to be quite the session, I'm sure. So, um, but in addition to that, this is the RPC. So the RPC has announced a new contest, the Aberrant Treasures of the Caribbean Deep. And so uh, I encourage you to check it out. This is obviously right on their homepage. You can click and get to this page that I'm looking at now. We've got a nice CSS theme that combines some natural wood tones with, uh, you know, some oceanic colors and, and textures. So um, I think it's pretty obvious what the theme is about, um, but you can go read uh, and, and check it out. Submissions will open the 25th of July, <laughs> which is the exact same date, <laughs> I think, if I'm not mistaken here, the exact same date that uh, the STP 7000 contest opens up. So 
Um, you know, I, I with the IndyCon, I tried to work around the 7K because I knew it was coming. In fact, I had a little tip-off about when it was going to happen. So that's why I went ahead and did the, uh, the IndyCon when I did. I, it was something that we've been wanting to do for a long time, and I've actually been waiting for several months because uh, we had we had um, – we had the Department Con, we had uh, Horror Con at the Liminal Archives, and I think there was a backroom one as well. So I tried to have it fit in, you know, because I wanted people's good writing. But anyway, so this is one. And then speaking of Liminal, uh, it's not really announced yet, but I do encourage you to keep an eye on this uh, homepage because according to their Discord server, um, there is a new contest in the works. So uh, definitely check that out. When it shows up, that should be interesting. And then, uh, speaking of global news, uh, the SCP Foundation News, which is the official uh, news publication of the SCP Wiki site, came out uh, for July, um, which isn't quite over yet, is it? But that's fine. And um, so, it, you know, this is a really great publication. I don't know if people read this. I love reading this. Uh, this is kind of like um, what Config Magazine wants to be when it grows up in the sense that they have all these great interviews, they have access to any author essentially that they would like to interview. Uh, so they're, they're very wealthy when it comes to uh, potential content. And so um, that is a really nice thing to see. This is an interview about something called the Meta Foundation, which is one step further. Uh, I have my own thoughts about this. Um, it's, it's kind of being set up as this sort of profundity um, for uh, complexity and overarching uh, pseudo-canonicity. But it's really, in my opinion, just sort of a step back towards a central canon. And, um, you know, so, I mean, it, but it's not to say it isn't interesting. You should definitely check this out. There's a lot of interesting people, good writers who are involved in the, uh, the direction of this and the production of this. So uh, they have some interesting things to stay, say in this interview. You should check that out for sure. Um, and then, of course, they do a nice job of just kind of synopsizing the best of the, of the month. Um, by upvotes, uh, they'll, they'll tell you that ratings, of course, don't mean everything, but they're representative of, of what people happen to like seeing at the time. Uh, with this in mind, the following are top-rated works last month. So, And this was, by the way, a really great article by Dr. Leonard. We obviously reviewed that on our weekly show. Uh, that was a really, really great article. So um, there's a lot of good content on these publications. Uh, some, some publications are better than others, but, um, you know, definitely worth a check out. So look at that, especially if you're into news uh, for the SCP Wiki. And then something else that I thought was worth mentioning. Uh, it's kind of a little peripheral to our space, uh, but it's something that we see a lot of. Um, maybe just kind of a sleeper contributor to the space. Uh, a technology that we perhaps take for granted for sure. Uh, but what that is is the Internet Archive. Uh, this is the Internet Archive uh, Twitter right here. And you probably know this as the Wayback Machine. And so it was interesting to see this sort of communicated throughout the last weeks in the space. I think Rounder House made a tweet uh, about this, a couple other people sort of raising awareness for this. But basically what's happening is that the Internet Archive is in a lawsuit. So um, they're sort of educating people about this. Obviously a lot might be at stake uh, if, if uh, this Internet Archive is successfully sued. Uh, and you may be asking yourself, why in the world would somebody want to sue something like this? Um, particularly because the Wayback Machine has been known to take down things that people request if it's of a, you know, harassment nature or if it's being used to harm somebody in some way. You know, the, the Internet Archive is known for capitulating to um, sort of peer pressures, uh, you know, basically. So it's not that. I don't think anybody is suing them uh, for that. I think instead... Um, there's a lot of copyright concerns. This is really a um, sort of a chronic issue with the internet that really hasn't worked itself out when the um, when basically the internet came about and people were able to copy web pages. That introduced a whole uh, a whole set of um, basic copyright concerns and interesting questions that obviously the law was not technologically capable of, of answering. And so that's really the way it's been for a long time. So I, I haven't read the details, but I do assume that this is probably what this is uh, about. Now, what does this have to do with containment fiction? Well, if you don't know, um, all of the SCP Wiki, I'd say probably 90% of the SCP Wiki and its history is cataloged and archived in the Wayback Machine. So that is to say, not only is it a useful tool for us now in this day and age, 
But, you know, in the unfortunate event, the unfortunately likelihood and the unfortunate inevitability that Wikidot does eventually go down, um, the Wayback Machine will really be uh, the only vestige of what exists of the SCP Wiki. And it might be the largest store of SCP Wiki content and history uh, that exists at that point, um, certainly centrally. So it, it's a very important thing, I think, to, to be aware of this, to support this if you can. Um, you know, this is definitely something that would be a travesty if, if, this, um, <clears throat> if this project was sued out of existence. So just a thing to keep, keep your eye on and just to be aware about. I definitely thought that that should be sort of uh, broadcast. All right. So uh, this is the point of the show where we are going to open up the phone line. So if you do have something that you want to say, you can call in. Now's the time for that. Once again, 316-444-3115 to talk about things. Relatively uh, keeping it in the containment fiction world, please. Um, by the way, if uh, you don't have time to catch us live, you can always call that number and leave a voicemail. And come time for this portion of the show, we will be more than happy to listen to that voicemail and react to it in any way that we might need to. But uh, in lieu of any calls, which I, I do assume we might not have, uh, this is a call-in show, but it's <laughs> kind of a misnomer. <clears throat> but that's quite all right. Um, we got a lot to talk about anyway. But uh, if you do want your voice to be heard, if you have a question, a comment, a criticism, uh, if you'd like to troll, we accept that too. That's always a, uh, usually a pretty fun time. Uh, we do that. So, But uh, this is also the point of the show where we will get into Twitter takes. So obviously, um, Twitter is a buzz you know, all the time. Uh, the SCP Twitter space is, space is a little bit of a... Hmm... Uh, I don't know if I want to use the word toxic. It's just a very difficult place to be. A lot of brush, uh, a lot of overgrown foliage to try to work your way through, just to walk around in this space. A lot of it is, uh, maybe it's not toxic, but it's kind of barb-like. They've got a lot of barbs going on. So um, the point of this uh, portion of the show is hopefully to take in all the best takes from Twitter uh, and centralize them in one place so that you do not have to do that yourself. You can just check out this portion of the show and I do that for you. So, um, a lot of good takes, a lot of bad takes. Let's get into them. So first things first, uh, <laughs> just to kind of keep things close to home to start off with, we have this nice meme that was created by the uh, infamous Dr. Caldall, who, um, you know, certainly has been a menace for the SCP Wiki and uh, certainly isn't too popular in our spaces either, I uh, hope he doesn't mind me saying. But uh, certainly a humorous individual with a bright mind. And uh, so this individual made this um, meme called the Confix Civil War, part of the Culture Wars. Uh, this is on uh, Harmony's Twitter. I'll probably end up retweeting this too. Just a lot of fun. Uh, but the belligerents on one side, the main site coalition, SCP Backrooms, the Yurt, our SCP, and then the Unholy Alliance is opposed, uh, RPC, Chaos Insurgency, Liminal, Config Magazine, Russia, Alleged, and various independent actors. And of course, this kind of uh, mocks and mimics a, uh, an actual Wikipedia article on, on something like war. So that was funny. Uh, check that out. That's pretty fun to see, I think. All right, what else? Uh, so this is something that happened sort of socially in the space in the last couple of weeks that uh, certainly is worth taking a look at and that honestly is, is pretty disgusting and uh, pretty nauseating, I think, for anybody who's in the space. Uh, but this is a nice Twitter uh, post that sort of uh, embodies all that went on. So uh, this is uh, Phantom, who, who we are a big fan of for sure, uh, around these parts. And uh, this is uh, a tweet, and I'll read it. Jackie, you felt like we betrayed you. You likely projected all of your behaviors onto us, the community, and pretty much everyone else. You were the darling of this quote-unquote shithole. You didn't decide to walk. You got kicked because you're a predator. Sincerely, a bunny girl. And of course, if you haven't picked up on it yet, and if you're not watching, uh, this is a, in reference to um, Jack Rabbit. So we all remember what happened with Jack Rabbit, and um, you know these things seem to be, uh, you know, playing themselves out. But there's a, there's always some sort of aftershock, you know, some sort of recoil that hits, and this is kind of what that was. So um, the, what this tweet is a response to is that Jackie, someone had access to her Facebook or was in that sphere, um, Jack Rabbit, uh, after this whole thing happened with her uh, in the space, you know, of course she ran away uh, from the space, probably an indication of guilt, um, 
posted a series of posts on her Facebook, um, and a lot of them are like this. I'll just read this one too. It's really hard to put into words. July 4th will mark exactly one month since I made the decision to walk away from my lofty position within the shithole SCP community. So let's all pretend those fireworks are for me. I sure will. Uh, so that's basically what, what has happened. So Jackie has decided to take this back to her side of things, on her side of the story, in her own spaces. And it seems um, sort of perpetuate this self-mythology uh, that she has for herself, that she's the good guy, uh, and that she did nothing wrong, and that uh, everyone else around here, around these parts, uh, is, the, is the enemy. So... Uh, we had a lot of commentary on this. Uh, this is um, D. Sherm, who I agree with in this case. That always happens with me and Sherm, uh, but this is a good take. Remember, guys, she did absolutely nothing wrong. We're the bad guys here. Uh, yada, yada, yada. Uh, and so there's a lot of collected um, screen caps of Jackie talking. Um, you know, just once again, this like thing that I saw and heard this whole time, and a lot of other people did, it's just like a disgustingly saccharine. Uh, commentary, a disgusting, sickeningly sugary sort of uh, sort of self-promotional and uh, and a fake community love sort of like preachiness, um, and that's happening still on her Facebook in regards to the community. Uh, you know, uh, I, I don't really care. I mean, she has her own opinion of the space, and she's allowed it, and she's obviously allowed to broadcast that to uh, whatever poor sort of individual uh, follows her, but. Um, you know, uh, it's just a really interesting thing to, to watch develop. Uh, you know, somebody who runs away from the space, right, um, like that, is probably probably tattling on themselves in a lot of ways. Uh, you have villains, quote-unquote villains in the space, who don't do that, right? So, for example, Bright sort of vanished, you know, for good reasons, obviously. Uh, Jack Rabbit certainly vanished. You know, myself, Harmony, we didn't vanish. We're still around. In fact, that perplexes people who are still in the space. But the reason is, is because we didn't really do anything wrong, okay? These people did things wrong, and they know it. And so they ran away, uh, like a little bunny running away. Um, but anyway, this is the nice account that you can go to that really collects, I think, the most impressive and comprehensive picture of what this situation is all about. Uh, the individual's name is Burb. Um, Ghost Burb is the handle on Twitter with a zero where the, where the O should be. Uh, this is somebody who came out after what happened to Jack Rabbit uh, was made public and um, has a really interesting testimony. Uh, this actual actual tweet that I have pulled up here is part of a thread, um, and basically all this talks about um, you know anyone who has been hurt by and betrayed by Jack Rabbit. I feel sorry for you. Uh, I've been there with countless of others. So this is basically just another testimony from somebody who had been treated by this individual jackrabbit in the same way that she ended up treating the wiki uh, and its space and so um, just another testimony from somebody a community over you know uh, who experienced something very similar so if you are interested in ca catching up on that do um, not not for necessarily just the drama of it but just because it's it's interesting and I think beneficial to study the patterns of these kinds of people uh, con artistry and things like this but also people who who, who know what they did was wrong and um, their actions and their cowardice sort of pronounce that for them the actions speaking much louder than their hollow words might all right, uh, and then a couple other people chimed in, of course. Uh, Grigori Carpin has something to say. Uh, that face when your abuser calls you toxic. By the way, did you know the whole SCP community is toxic? Apparently all of us were the problem all along. Uh, this is what predators do, turn disadvantage into opportunities, use her quote-unquote downfall to find new targets. Pity Jackie, she's the real victim here. Uh, that's a really mature thing to say, uh, given what uh, Grigori Carpin, you know, uh, has gone through when it comes to how Jack Rabbit manipulated the space. So kudos to uh, Grigori, um, quite quite a mature spirit and soul here. So that's nice to see. Uh, but he's absolutely right. Um, you know, this is this is what people do who can't accept uh, basically anything but the glowing praise that they are desperate to receive, and will do basically anything and say anything to convince themselves. Uh, that they still they still rightfully have. So, um, you know, just to settle the issue, though, it, it's not that one or the other is toxic. It's that you're both toxic. Okay, it just that it just so happened that Jack Rabbit is more toxic than you, by far. All right, so let's leave that. That's quite of a heavy heavy topic. Let's move on to something a little more jovial. And so this is uh, obviously in anticipation of the Seven Con that's coming up. Uh, we have a lot of uh, 
people who are sort of revving their engines and getting ready. Uh, we're, we're getting to the point now where we see people finishing their drafts and sending them off for crit. Uh, and, you know, woe unto me and uh, perhaps Harmony, who will be helping me synopsize each of these entries when they're posted. Uh, a lot of these seem to be pretty long, like, you know, uh, novella, you know, length, you know, 12,000, 14,000 words, stuff like that. So, um, whew. Yeah, it's going to be big. But this one I thought was pretty funny. This is from uh, Shaggy Dreadlocks. Where SCP-7000 is the rating module. <laughs> Which, of course, everybody knows that I, th I think this is cute. I think this is funny. I also think it's quite uh, fitting because the rating module at times, anybody who's written for the SCP Wiki, uh, doesn't really matter your success or not, um, probably understands and relates to the idea that the rating module almost seems like a roll of the dice, right? It's almost got a lot of, it's seemingly got a lot of luck um, baked into it. You know, is this article going to do well? You know, I don't know. You know, it's really tough to say. It's almost, you know, it's almost like, you know, throwing a coin up in the air, whether or not uh, a given article is going to do well or not. Um, but that's just the way that is. So I thought this was pretty funny. It's a pretty good take, pretty humorous. I like that. And then um, I think people in the space have been paying attention to a, a really interesting Twitter account, a novelty account, basically, that popped up. Uh, I think this month, um, Crazy Ass Moments in SCP History is what it's called. And it's, it's had some really, really great posts. I love seeing this because that's kind of what we have been trying to do this whole time, uh, which is basically document in sort of an archaeological exhibit um, things that have happened in the culture. Uh, and of course, this one's a little more mimetic. It's a little more focused on just, you know, the crazy, goofy things that are like, wow, uh, a lot of shock value, you know, um, I think in the, in the purpose of this novelty account. But it's a really interesting account. I wish I had it pulled up, but I don't. Uh, but anyway, I thought it was interesting also that it is run apparently by Modulum. I, I, I guess that's who runs it. This is uh, just uh, an indication that this might be the person who runs it. Um, and I just say that because people were asking who might run it. And so this might, this person might run it. But yeah, um, in fact, it's really interesting. I think this is a, a sort of episode of conversion evolution where um, no one's going to believe us. But us at the uh, Society for Containment Fiction, we're talking about doing uh, an iceberg for the SCP Wiki. And not necessarily crazy ass moments, but just like, you know, interesting community events, cultural happenings that have happened not necessarily crazy stuff, but just stuff that you might not know about. Um, and so we're actually still working on that. So everyone's going to think that we copied this person because they got it out first, which is fine. But I hopefully uh, believe that the iceberg that we do release is going to be of enough quality to render that concern uh, moot. Uh, we have a lot of information on the SCP Wiki that are, that is going to go into this uh, iceberg. So... Hopefully that'll come out, but uh, in the meantime, this is just a really, really great uh, Twitter account. Very, very fun to watch. Uh, very, very, very educational as well, as it is interesting. Moving on, we got the SCP Wiki, uh, tw official Twitter. And um, so this, is a, this was an interesting thing to see. So this tweet says, have thoughts about ways to improve the site but never found a good place to put them the community outreach team is running a suggestions thread to provide feedback on how the site is being run you can leave your comments below and so if we look at that we go to a post this is on the actual site it's not on 05 and it was started by optimistic lucio so kudos uh, but this is a nice little faq where people can um, basically voice their concerns this was for a week or so uh, they've closed now, but uh, this is still a nice place to go just to kind of get a vibe. It's almost like another town hall uh, in a way, just to see what's on the, the user's mind, uh, what they think are issues. Uh, there's a lot of commentary in here about like the writing process, like green lights were, were really something that was mentioned quite a lot. Um, all kind of stuff. Uh, lowering the age is discussed, of course. That's always something that, that people need to talk about. I thought this was an interesting take um, from Pedantique, who I thought was gone, so it's nice to see this individual around again. This is a generally unactionable suggestion, but I'd like to caution current staff about overly relying on transparency as a solution to issues. Some level of transparency is good, obviously. Yada, yada, yada. Um, but, and it goes on. So I thought that was an interesting... Uh, certainly not a mainstream uh, idea. Uh, so a lot of interesting stuff goes on in these uh, these sorts of threads just to see. And kudos for the staff, kudos to uh, Optimistic Lucio, I guess, 
and the rest of the staff for doing this and lending an ear to the um, community because for a pretty long time now, the staff has been somewhat buried, somewhat cloistered in their own heads and concerns. And I mean that chronically, sure, but uh, also uh, certainly the last few months where they've been doing this charter rewrite, uh, which no one who is not on the staff has any interest in whatsoever, um, probably because we all kind of intuit that it's not going to solve anything. But um, there are uh, different forms, different uh, threads for each of these different topics. So if you like this kind of stuff, if you want to see what people are talking about, um, you know, this breaks it down into uh, other threads that have more content in them and separate it by category. So you can go check that out. All right, moving on. So uh, a lot of commentary again about the uh, upcoming contest. This is from Flops, uh, who, who usually has something pretty good to say. Uh, every SCP author writing for a, a thousand contest since 3000. History? Great. I have an idea for my fantasy short story. Mystery? Great. I have an idea for my fantasy novella. Nature? Great. I have an idea for my fantasy novel. <laughs> so there's a couple funny things. Uh, fantasy seems to be sort of a theme that everybody has been expecting for several years, but that doesn't show up. We talked about that last week. And then um, very subtly in here, there's, there's an escalation. First it's a short story, then it's a, a novella, and by now it's a, a novel. So what's going to happen in 7K? Uh, an encyclopedia, I guess. I don't know. But yeah, things seem to be sort of um, expanding and inflating. And this is, a, this is an author from the SCP Wiki called Big Sloth on My Face. I believe it was the 6,000 contest uh, where this, this author posted uh, a first article, and it did pretty well. So I think it, I think it came in the top five. Uh, in fact, I think this is one of the things that that crazy moments of uh, SCP Twitter uh, had, to, had to post about. So anyway, uh, this is a very underappreciated statement that I think is important, so I, I thought it'd be good to read this out loud. SCP is a fantastic example of how constraints can sometimes enhance creativity rather than limiting it. Having a format and a set of assumptions to lean into allows for such fantastic storytelling and trope breaking, even for less confident authors. That's just a wonderful statement, very, very um, wise, I think. You know, not a lot of people can appreciate the, um, the role of constraints in writing, but, you know, the role of constraints, you can look at them in one of two ways, whether the glass is half full or half empty. But constraints said in a more optimistic uh, way, a more positive way, are definitions, are boundaries, um, edges to things, things that give things unity and shape and uh, objectivity such that you can point to them. Because if they never ended, they didn't have any boundaries, you wouldn't be able to point to them ostensibly. So um, that's really, I think, a, an excellent thing to say. Um, not a lot of people, I think, uh, appreciate that. There's a, I mean, this is just the nature of any sort of art. There's a lot of pushing against the envelope to try to get into a new space. Um, a ton of that goes on at the SCP Wiki. Obviously, a lot of the authors are very, very young as well, so they're obviously more uh, prone to that sort of thing for sure. Um, but, you know, at some point, you've got to have a balance. Otherwise, you're not going to be working in your own genre anymore. You've, you've uh, basically busted out of the constraints. And it is true that they can exponent your creativity. For example, um, you know, K contest themes, right? Uh, that's, a, that's a constraint, but uh, it's amazing sometimes how that can accelerate people's creativity. All right. Uh, this next tweet I thought was, was unfortunate. Um, I don't like calling people out, um, and I certainly don't like calling out uh, somebody who I have uh, a history of calling out, you know, that probably isn't very interesting to people or new or fresh, but this was a post that I thought probably needed a little more discussion. And this is DJ Cactus. It's weird sometimes seeing people say, I can't believe I got an SCP ban and never saw it coming. DJ Cactus says, bruh, you gotta really fuck up around here to catch a permaban that SCP cops ain't caught me yet, and I was number one most wanted for like six years. Like, shake my head, you definitely saw it coming, laugh my ass off. I don't know if DJ Cactus just doesn't know this. I'm sure he does, so this comes off as a little, I'm gonna use the word disingenuous. Um, but, you know, we have chat logs from the staff chat that confirm the fact that DJ Cactus has done plenty to get banned. 
uh, DJ Cactus has done more than enough to get banned. If anybody else had done the things DJ Cactus did, they would have been banned probably five times over by now. And in chat logs and staff chat logs that we have, it's confirmed that the only reason that that hasn't happened to DJ Cactus is because of his popularity. And the staff are afraid to ban Cactus, and they admit as much in the staff chat. So I think it's just, I think it's just remarkably tone deaf to say, um, you know, the cops ain't caught me. I was most wanted for like six years. Like. The only reason you weren't caught is that is that one reason. The, the bottom line is corruption. They don't want to do it because they want to make their site look bad, and they're afraid. That's, that's the only reason that you didn't get in trouble. Okay, the only reason you're still on the site. We got plenty of evidence uh, indicating this. So I, I just thought this was a really bad take. Obviously, it's nothing that people question. Uh, people don't really have the framework of understanding to realize how backwards this tweet actually is. Um, but just wanted to point that out. Uh, I'm not sure, once again, if Cactus just knows what he's doing and is having uh, a little laugh with himself, or uh, if he doesn't know that. But um, maybe he should know that. Maybe this is a good time to inform him that the staff have blatantly admitted that the only reason he wasn't banned is, is not because of his action or because he was good at ducking the cops for six years. It's because uh, they were too, too weak to do it. They were too afraid. So interesting when you try to give that advice to other people. That's kind of... A little bit oxymoronic. All right, moving on. So we got uh, Nat Voltaic. This is uh, an author from the SCP Wiki who people are probably familiar with. Um, Nat Voltaic used to be 9 Volt uh, on the Wiki back when I was there. I hope that's not a dead name. I apologize if it is. That's just how I remember uh, this individual. Um, and a good, a good author, really good author. Um, very active around uh, the Series 5 opening. And before that too, so uh, not really active on the site anymore. Unfortunately, there were some, um, I guess, social things that happened. But this is um, <laughs> someone who we kind of come back to now and now and again. Uh, Nat Voltaic has very controversial takes on things, which make for really good discussion here. So this is another one of those examples. This is a tweet from Nat Voltaic, and it says, "Yep, the wiki is dead. It's all a vapid cultural slurry now. It's over." And the picture accompanying this is uh, an SCP explained story and animation of SCP-5981, uh, which the title of that SCP is Brian Griffin Visits Nuke City. Um, and uh, the, the thumbnail here, uh, here actually has Brian Griffin running away from some awful monstrous entity. So uh, this uh, was obviously pretty controversial of a thing. Um, to post, and there's a lot of people who kind of push back, so let's get into that. This person says, Is it really fair to judge the whole wiki based on your assumption of an article gleamed through a YouTube thumbnail, though? I think that's supposed to be gleamed with an N, but that's okay. The point still stands. Um, and then Nat responds, Considering how much the SCP wiki's writing quality has declined over the past few years, and how much of it is either tediously meme or meaninglessly meta, uh, it ain't about the thumbnail alone. And this person follows up a question, are there really that many meme articles? And I can answer this because I read everything that comes out of the wiki. Yes, there are that many meme articles. Uh, it is increasingly a majority of articles that come through. So, yeah. It certainly is a point being made here. And then Modulum uh, comes in and says something that I thought was very wise. I feel like this is an issue far more of the lurker readers the wider bleed of SCP into the mainstream than author culture itself. There's plenty of classically literary authors occupying popular spaces like T. Rutherford, Harry Blank, uh, Na Nagrios, uh, Nagiros, etc. And so that's a really great, great statement to make, I think. It's, it's very true. Um, you know, people like T. Rutherford, uh, Harry Blank, when he wants to be, is just, there's no one better, okay? These are, these are highly academically polished writers who are incredibly good at writing. And so this is a great point made by Modulum, and uh, Modulum goes on to say, the problems that Nat Voltaic is talking about here stu still uh, very much exist, don't get me wrong, but I think it's necessarily an endemic, I don't think it's necessarily an endemic culture so much as a persistently popular arc article type that won't ever go away in the landscape. Uh, they talk about specific examples that we, we, don't, have to, we don't have to go over right now. But, um, Nat comes back and says, this still, this still feels endemic to me because it, 
Even its very presence is a sign that articles of this nature are something the wiki can allow, even if they falter on pretty much all quality standards you can think of. And that alone to me is suggestive of the prevailing site culture. I think, I think the truth lies somewhere between these two uh, excellent, excellent observation points. Um, I tend to sort of agree with Nat Voltaic just in the sense that uh, this other side of the argument, the modulum side of the argument, it, you certainly have to sort of ignore some of the things going on in order to staunchly have that um, position. Uh, Nat Voltaic, I think uh, there's always a risk of being a little too, um, you know, sort, sort of uh, soothsaying, you know. Um, going on in this sort of approach from this angle, but uh, at the same time, you know, you've got to sort of keep an eye on these things, otherwise, before you know it, uh, you've got a whole garden full of weeds, uh, or your garden is completely overrun by ants. This is the stuff that you've got to keep your eye on if you want to tend to uh, a project that you're trying to nourish and grow and have a variety of things uh, come through uh, in, in the production of. So, uh, on that note, uh, Kumioi, Communism Will Win, has some interesting takes kind of in this same category here. This one uh, I thought was really good. So, uh, Communism Will Win says, All the pronouncements of SCP Wiki's death, be they about pronouns, pop culture references, long articles, format screws, politics, whatever, are excessively optimistic. We don't get to live in the timeline where SCP has the decency to peter out after it stops being good. <laughs> and that's just the best way to look at this, you know. Um, it's not to say that those things aren't uh, over dramatic, you know, um, but it's just to say that it's optimistic. I agree, uh, and this is something I've long said, uh, is that there isn't going to be no ostensible moment that you can point to and say, ah, that's when the wiki died. Uh, instead, it's more like an issue where, um, you know, they say that after your, your heart stops beating, right, after something dies, there's still some brain activity, correct? And so it's um, that subjective dilation of time and experience and uh, potentially even um, negligence as to what is happening, sort of uh, being able to convince yourself that you're still alive in that space. Uh, that kind of, in my opinion, is where the SCP Wiki is. There's really no clear moment that you can say that that happened, um, but I do think we're living in that sort of time dilation where things are being drawn out. <clears throat> There's a lot of denial. A lot of non-recognition as to what actually is going on. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I at the same time agree uh, with Akumio. I think it's a really good take here. All right. And then uh, back to SD Locke. Um, she's a 10, but she edits Amnesiacs back into Series 1 articles. <laughs> and then somebody says, I need some gauze for that deep cut. This is uh, an old joke. You really have to know Series 1 stuff. Uh, they used to call Amnestics Amnesiacs until... Uh, Alania came around and said, hey, amnesiacs are a term for people, and so amnestics should be the term for uh, the pills that cause memory loss. And so that was one of those moments, those sort of um, you know, pivotal moments uh, that really drew a line in the sand in the history of the wiki, because nobody really went back after that. It was one of those observations that you couldn't unsee. And so um, this is just a nice, funny way to refer to that, too. Uh, the Wanderer's Library has this to tweet about the 7K. Reminder that every instance of luck was determined from the start. Which obviously is a very funny and deterministic way of looking at the uh, theme of luck. And actually, uh, I really hope I see an article that kind of plays around with this. You know, that it takes the theme of luck. I think most people are going to ingratiate that actively into their, into their uh, article and into their entry. It'll be really interesting to see if anybody has the skill, the capacity, the wherewithal, and the creativity to find a way to basically negate the idea of luck as an entry. I think that'll be really, really cool. All right, uh, back to Akumioi, aka Communism Will Win, uh, who says, I feel like we can do better than this. Uh, this is a screen cap tweet, I guess, uh, that says this, all caps. Kicks down door. SCB upvotes from plus 200. Who hasn't upvoted it yet? Grabs you. Is it you? Did you not upvote it? Shakes and slaps you. Answer me, you bastard. And then the next one says, This is a call-out post to anyone, i.e. major authors, who hasn't read this SCP yet, my SCP yet. Please do so, do so immediately, and I will be very happy. And so uh, Communism Will Win, Akumioi, is trying to say that this is probably a little too blatantly desperate, a little too fantastically conspicuous of 
uh, shilling uh, for milestone upvote stuff. Um, but the sad part about this is that I think, uh, so uh, yeah, he goes on, uh, sorry, uh, they go on to say, I guess barely disguised desperation is kind of funny. Um, and then the actual author of the work <laughs> said, bro, which I don't know if you should say bro. I thought it was funny, a funny way to promote a work of mine nearing a milestone. I'm sorry if it came off as desperate or mean. Um, you know, and then they sort of reconcile once the uh, confrontation happens, which is always what happens, which is a good thing to do. But um, that's why you have to maintain lines of communication. You can't ban people immediately, by the way. Or at least you shouldn't if you're intelligent. So, um, but yeah, the sad thing about this, and it's nice that they reconcile and that the author comes back and, and tries to explain himself, but this really underlies uh, a very, very, very deep uh, psychology that's on the wiki. And, and I think the... Uh, there's a little bit of um, acrobatics, a little sort of gymnastics in fronting this as if it is a funny joke, when in reality it is a more honest representation of what the person is actually hoping for and wanting to see. Uh, and they think that softening it through a sort of euphemism of joking around is going to mask that, but it's very clear that it doesn't. And I feel like, unfortunately, that's a lot of what the um, culture still is on the wiki. I think a lot of people are doing better and trying to minimize uh, the importance of upvotes and, and uh, quantitative m metrics of success and things like this because they're, they're really ultimately meaningless. Um, but, you know, uh, there's still a lot of authors, particularly new ones, who haven't, haven't really developed the, uh, the maturity, I think, to think of it in that way. So we're getting better, but, um, you know, as this post communicates, uh, we are still, still in a time, still, still certainly in an era. And then uh, the next one here I thought was uh, kind of an unfortunate thing. So this is author uh, Calibri Bold, uh, who, you know, good good author, good author. Um, and this was a tweet. So unfortunately, I made the decision to delete SCP-6961, which was an article that was posted to the SCP Wiki this week. I realized that it was a bad move to post this sort of gradual series during the contest. That being said, the series is still going to happen and the entry will be back. I'm just going to move it until after the contest. So uh, SCP-6961 was one of the articles that I read this week in preparation for that weekly review and crit show, and I thought it was really good. I thought it was you know, a nice article. Um, I certainly thought that it was underappreciated. The vote, I think, was at plus 10 or something like that you know, after a few days, and I guess that's probably below Calibold's sort of um, publicity standards. You know, Some people don't like to get that low of votes. They'll kind of get rid of it so that it doesn't drag down their their total average, which is something that they probably like to keep a strict eye on. And so some people will delete things that don't do great like that. It's another reason why I think people are uh, a little anxious to write tales at times too. But um, anyway, so it, it was just a sad thing to see because I was excited about this article. I was excited about talking about this article. Uh, and it's just a sad thing to see that, um, you know, despite the article's quality, you know, despite the article, uh, you know, being a finished product and being ready, um, that first of all, someone has to dance around something like the uh, 7K, where basically people um, stop keeping track of the of the wiki in order to you know get ready for their moment in the uh, their 15 minutes of fame in the spotlight. But also, I think it's sad that someone's um, sensitivity to their reception is such that they will take down something that was less than what they wanted, and trying to sort of strategically put it at a more op opportune moment for its for its exposure and publicity. Um, you know, I, I was, I thought this was probably an overreaction from uh, Calibri Bold. Uh, I, I think if you've written something and you post it, uh, you know, maybe it's not a good idea to do it when uh, the actual entries are being flooded into the wiki where you're probably getting about, you know, 70 new articles a week. Um, but posting hasn't started yet. And in fact, once again, like last week, this week on the SCP Wiki was a relatively uh, unpopulated week, so it, it almost in ways seems to uh, have been a very good week to put something onto the SCP Wiki because uh, more attention goes to those this week for sure. And then the very last tweet uh, thing that we'll get into here is this one from, uh, I think this is an author on the SCP Wiki, yeah, <laughs> their, um, their Twitter says, decent SCP author, <laughs> so that's, that's, that's funny. Uh, this one says, the most downvoted 7con entry, and it's a retweet of Apple TV, on Twitter who says no human has ever stepped foot into the land of luck until now an Apple original film uh, hashtag luck is streaming August 5th so uh, I don't know maybe once again these sort of like dovetails 
into uh, the same themes, these sort of like convergent evolutions of the new sphere. I don't know. Um, but Apple seems to be interested in luck just as the SCP Wiki is interested in luck. But uh, I think the more important and interesting thing to say about this tweet, which is, which is really funny, uh, is that there's a point in here. And, um, you know, if Apple did submit something like their land of luck to the seven con as an entry, I'm, I'm fairly certain that it would be absolutely downvoted into oblivion and probably pretty quickly. And the point that I'm trying to bring out with this is not to bash Apple, it's just to uplift our community in a way. Sounds kind of cheesy, but something that we take for granted is that, uh, you know, our content, containment fiction, uh, SCPs coming out, one of the reasons I got into it is because it's so much more refreshing. It's so much more innovative, exciting, um, it, you know, like it's taking these new directions uh, and really leaving these old, tired forms of uh, writing and publication uh, and production behind, you know. So, I, I mean, you know, a few things obviously are anomalies in that regard, like uh, Breaking Bad or, or Better Call Saul, other other uh, shows here and there. But, you know, I would much rather read SCPs than go watch an Apple ex original film, you know, about whatever, basically. <clears throat> so, um, I, I personally believe that the SCP... Um, the format, uh, the genre, whatever you want to call it. If you don't want to call it containment fiction, you want to call it something else, that's fine with me. I don't really mind. Uh, I really think that this art movement that we, that we are part of and that we are watching still proliferate, uh, in fact, more than ever, honestly, is uh, just a, a giant stratospheric leap uh, from the old stuff like this, like what Apple is going to put on, on their uh, original, original film on Apple TV+. Plus. Which itself is kind of a joke. I think it's I think it's just uh, sad to see so many companies try to be Netflix when they want to grow up. Which, by the way, I don't think is doing very well, right? If I if I'm up to the times, I don't know. All right, um, last section of the show. We still have our phone lines open. Uh, if you do want to do that, uh, it'll remain open for this last portion of the show, which is just a little political look at this space. Um, o5 command being the um, the staff page and forum for the SCP wiki so obviously a lot of uh, political things go on there and it's sort of like a mecca and a hub for uh, for for news and ongoing events for commentary so we'll take a look at what's been going on there lately a couple of things here um, so this one another post by optimistic Lucio that I think is an excellent thing to see uh, is a discussion and the discussion is titled changing our mindset so I'm just going to read the first line here. I want to talk about a common mindset that seems to rear its head in most of our processes, both public-facing and not. The idea that it is imperative to have nothing bad ever happen. And so uh, the post, which you should definitely read, goes on to say, uh, you know, we try to minimize the potential uh, uh, surface area for attacks and for bad things to happen. <clears throat> but that can get a little overzealous. Uh, a little over consumptive, a little over consuming, and a little overreaching. And so uh, Optimistic Lucio goes on to say, all of this comes at a price. Less good stuff happens. Just because something isn't bad doesn't mean it is good. And designing our systems around loss prevention makes us forget to use our systems to improve the user's enjoyment of this site. I think this is an incredibly important thing to say because this last part of the sentence, uh, using the system to uh, improve the user enjoyment of the site, really as opposed to making uh, the systems about loss prevention and damage protection and PR protection and things like this, uh, really has been the case for a number of years now. It's been the case for a number of years that um, the, the staff on the wiki, I think, are just uh, hyper, hyper, uh, almost uh, obsessively compulsory uh, sort of focused on how they can avoid you know bad PR you know or, or bad things happening and so at some point it does become a self-fulfilling prophecy these things sort of will themselves into a into existence in a way that's much worse if you just let these things sort of take their uh, phases naturally and so I think this is a really excellent discussion you should check that out uh, people really have some good things to say there's not a whole lot of discussion about this I don't think you're bound to get a whole lot of discussion about this because this is a very, very challenging thing to say. And I don't think a lot of people want to think about that because once you sort of lend your ear to what is trying to be said here, 
Uh, you are by definition coming out of your bubble just a little bit more than you probably are used to if you're on staff. Um, so anyway, there's also a little bit of discussion on the uh, 04 side of this. So uh, very, very interesting stuff. I definitely encourage you to read that. And kudos to these things being talked about. I, I got to say, you know, back this time last year, particularly on my blog, you know, I'd write about the SCP Wiki staff a lot, right? Um, and that's still the case, obviously. I still write about that. Um, but I find myself having less and less to say uh, these days about the SCP Wiki staff. And, you know, I've thought a lot about that. And part of it, I think, obviously, is just natural progression of things. We, we all sort of tend to phase in and out of certain um, interests and topics, certainly. But uh, honestly, when I take a look at what the staff is capable of talking about themselves, particularly in places like O5 or other places like... Um, you know, the SCPD meta channel, uh, stuff that comes out of there. Um, you know, I'm actually pretty, pretty happy, you know, pretty glad about what I see people talking about. I mean, not necessarily to say that things have changed, um, you know, to a point where commentary is not needed, certainly not. But uh, just to see people sort of uh, taking the initiative and, and being able to think the things that I think in past years, there was a much, much uh, stronger, um, a much uh, more repellent barrier to uh, is really encouraging. And so uh, there's a lot of people doing this. Uh, obviously, I think uh, Optimistic Lucio is somebody who does this well. Um, someone like Rounder House, we've seen do this a, a good job of this. Uh, there are others as well, um, certainly. So, um, you know, the more that these people are willing to take on that role themselves, the less space that I have. <laughs> Uh, in my little corners of the internet. And so, uh, you know, if you really want to make me irrelevant, you know, take care of the work yourself. And so that's kind of what I see happening. So that's just really, uh, it's, it's really encouraging. It's really a great feeling, a great feeling, a great thing to watch. So anyway, um, a couple other updates on that note. Uh, Limey, who we've enjoyed, I think, a lot as a, a participant in the recap uh, process, uh, is leaving uh, the staff, going on reserve. I don't have the mental energy to dedicate to this. I'd rather spend what I have writing and chilling in the community rather than 05. And uh, that's just a wonderful thing to see also because this is a matter of prioritization, right? You have a lot of people who, uh, despite all the mental energy and the dedication it takes to stay and remain on staff, um, will still do it. Uh, obviously, a lot of people just want to see the wiki to be a better place. But I think there is that one type of person who does it because their priorities are such that uh, they can't they can't tolerate or imagine or fathom the idea of giving up such a place of relative status amongst their peers, right? And those are the kinds of people who probably shouldn't be leading the community. So in that sense, it's very very ironic, uh, almost paradoxical thing where uh, those who are in the community uh, doing good for the community as community members. Uh, as writers, which is uh, supposedly the focus of this group in this place, you know, probably do a better job of helping the community than someone like um, that person who I just described. So this I thought was something, uh, obviously, to sort of salute uh, Limey. Thank you for your work um, on staff. I was I was a good good fan of Limey. I thought they had generally good things to say. On the whole, um, not perfect. On the whole, uh, but uh, this is just a, a wonderfully. Um, heartening thing to see someone say hey, you know what I'd rather get back to the to what this community is supposed to be about so uh, good luck to Limey uh, we wish you well and uh, hope to see you writing writing soon a couple other things that I thought were pretty strange and interesting is that um, the staff is talking about abolishing the moderator position on the wiki um, and the reason for this if we really want to go into it is because uh, we all know that Jacob Conwell, who was recently made into an administrator on the wiki and who has been in charge of the deletions process for several, several years, uh, has left. Uh, we looked at this uh, two weeks ago where Conwell has to go to uh, medical school residency. I'm sorry, not medical school. Conwell has graduated medical school and is now going to a residency, which is the next phase of becoming a full-fledged physician. And uh, obviously it takes up way too much time, so Conwell is not going to be able to participate in the wiki anymore, and that's what that um, sayonara uh, was about. So, because Conwell is basically the zen of deletions, right, um, was almost a single point of failure for the wiki because of just how much work they were able to do, what a workhorse Conwell was with deletions. So now that Conwell is gone, deletions are strained. 
And the bottom line is that they actually need more moderators. And so this, if you have read this, you, you quickly realize that it says that the, the purpose is to abolish the mod, but it's really, it's really not. It's actually the opposite. They actually want more mods. Uh, it's just that by removing the position, you don't have to worry about the whole bombast and pomp and circumstance of promoting somebody. And you also don't have to wait for the cyclical nature of the promotions on the SCP Wiki staff, which happen just at certain points. It's not like you can just say, hey, now you're a moderator, magically knighting them as a, as a moderator. You have to wait until the, the uh, uh, promotions, the promotion cycle. So, um, in order to get more moderator powers to more people so that deletions can actually work, they had to harry carry the whole position, uh, but keep everything about that position actionably so that people now can basically just be given moderator powers without the sinecure status of that position. Uh, and the whole, like I said, the whole giant bureaucratic slothful sort of motions that have to happen uh, before somebody can become a moderator. So now with this way, um, instead of promotions, somebody can just be fiated into the position of mods so that they can have, you know, mod powers and help uh, fill the hole that Jacob, uh, Dr. Jacob Conwell left on the SCP Wiki staff and the tasks that they uh, give to themselves. So this is basically on-demand mods. It's less abolishing mods, it's more dramatic than that, and it's more about we can promote mods at any time. So just to give you, once again, something I like to do for this show is is kind of break down what's going on on O5 in, uh, you know, more more of a layman terms kind of thing. So there's a lot of content here, a lot of discussion, but it's actually in abolishing the rank of mod, they're, they're really opening the can uh, of worms here to get more mods than ever. So it's kind of a strange thing to see, but that's basically what's going on with that. And then another post that happened in the last two weeks was uh, this finally, finally came up. I think a lot of people have been watching for this for a long time, but a public staff chat proposal. So this is something that the uh, RPC ha has done for a long time. Their uh, chat staff channels are public. Um, and, you know, so that's probably a good idea in a lot of ways. I mean, we do have to keep in mind Pedantique's um, point about, you know, too much transparency obviously can get to a bad thing. Um, but basically, all of this is about reducing uh, the ability for people to leverage their relative positions of seniority and authority in the SCP Wiki staff. This uh, public staff chat proposal is literally a, an attempt to deflate the areas and de disincentivize dishonesty that has been a very large problem in staff protected spaces, particularly in chat. And I wish I could say this is out of the good of the staff's heart, but unfortunately, I think there's this hovering sort of threat that everybody is very, uh, sort of has the hairs on their neck sticking up towards uh, on the SCP Wiki staff, where if they don't do something like this, and if they maintain the way it's always been done, which is just a closed door policy of uh, these special people get to be in this uh, exclusive cool club, you're gonna get leaks. You're always gonna get leaks. Uh, and in fact, probably now more than ever, people are probably biting and uh, chomping at the bit a little more than ever to leak things. And so this is their way of uh, alleviating that pressure. And, uh, you know, also at the same time, having people who can, you know, sort of think alongside the staff as they as they do things, which is good because in a lot of ways, it sort of works to also break down that very large gap between uh, the staff as they position themselves and their constituency, which is the users of the of the wiki. So, um, yeah, uh, this is also about uh, holding the staff accountable. Uh, that happened a lot, basically. Um, you know, Rounder House, I think, has been a big fan of this. He, he kind of says this. Uh, it's been a long time coming. Um, uh, he, this is actually a really good statement. Uh, we didn't do it back then because people were too psychologically attached to the notion to give away that secrecy without serious cultural changes. Uh, and so, you know, once again, uh, I'm not trying to I'm not trying to applaud too much for the SCP Wiki staff. They certainly still have their imperfections and everything, but they've they've come a long way in about a year. So, um, making making my need for commentary much much less relevant. Uh, they're doing a very good job of doing this themselves. 
So uh, that's really what I'd like to see because I honestly don't want to spend time doing all this. I'd rather be doing things like what Limey is talking about. So, uh, you know, very, very happy to see this. I certainly hope that they don't uh, take their foot off the gas and the accelerator because that's an easy thing to do once you, uh, once you do something like this and you have a tendency to rest on your laurels. Uh, I hope that doesn't happen. But this is just, I think, probably the right thing. It's a long time coming. And it's just a, it's a huge statement in and of itself to see that the staff is even ready uh, to discuss this in a, in a public way like this. Um, so anyway, kudos. I hope, I hope we get um, that worked out quickly. And then the very last thing that we'll talk about today, just to end on a little bit of a funny, funny thing here, is that <laughs> there is this disciplinary thread that came up, I think, yesterday that uh, people are very, very impressed with. Um, and so this is by uh, wiki.user Jack. This is about wiki.user Jack 1119, comma, et al, which is a very strange thing to see. Usually if somebody has a couple of sock puppet accounts, they'll just list them. And so this is immediately interesting. And so when you go in here, you find out, I'm just gonna read this. There's no, there's no other way to get through this besides just reading this. User Jack recently posted SCP-6158 which I'll see, uh, I'll see if we can open up here, uh, to the site. Soon the page began to accumulate a large number of upvotes from accounts created several months ago, but that did not have any other activity. The page is currently at plus 50, despite having a high proportion of downvotes. Um, they later edited the page to say the following, and I, we actually have a nice view of this page right here, right now. So I'll just read this too. This person says they changed, They actually had an SCP uh, in this slot and tried tried to upvote it through a tremendous number of sock puppet accounts, but it didn't work, which is really a great victory for the SCP wiki because I, I've always felt that was a way for somebody to uh, game the system pretty pretty definitively, you know. Um, and of course, a lot of this can be attributed to this person's lack of tact in enacting something like this. I'm sure that other people can do that uh, without being detected as easily and certainly probably have done this in the past without being detected at all. But anyway, this person, after it didn't work, changed their, um, changed their SCP entry to read the following. This place is a great idea, but a lot of relatively old members are acting like assholes and preventing newbies from contributing to this fantastic universe that so many teenagers like me have dreamed of. Please stop acting like a cult and try to be a bit more open to all newcomers. And then this site could be so much better. Thank you for reading. I wish you all the best in your life. And I apologize for the inconvenience. And um, so we actually have an archive also of the... Oh, I do want to point this out. One second. If we go back to the 05 post, we see uh, that they have linked this page that we just read. And they have also archived it. So if we actually take a click on this, we will once again see what we started our cast with and see that this is uh, captured on the Wayback Machine. And so it's just, a, and, and this is when it was plus 47. So um, yeah, uh, yikes. Uh, but anyway, so it's just, hopefully it goes to show you how pivotal the Wayback Machine is in uh, just daily operation of the internet, but certainly in our space as well. Um, anyways, uh, the, the 05 post goes on to say, um, this one staff member flagged accounts which were suspicious those accounts that voted on the article but had no other site activity. And uh, another user double-checked the list. After, <laughs> after this, the following accounts were revoked. And there's a collapsible, there's enough alt accounts here, there's enough alt accounts here where the, it had to be put into a collapsible. So let's, let's just click this together. Oh my God, <laughs> look at this. Oh my God, look at this. Oh my God. I mean, each of these has, not every single one, but most of them have icons, uh, profile picture stuff, very effortful. I mean, this is this is very impressive. So the uh, the post goes on to ask, what should we do with these accounts? You know, these are suspicious sock puppets. We asked them to explain their behavior, but this would be much more difficult. There's probably like 50, at least 50. You know, call it 50 to 80, something. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 11, 12, 13 times 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Wow. Um, that's a lot of sock puppets. I am pulling out my calculator because I can't do that in my head. 91. There are 91 sock puppet accounts here. Holy hell. Uh, so there. this is a little bit of a groundbreaking thing when it comes to disciplinary 
policy and procedure. Uh, no one, no one has ever been caught doing this before. I think people probably have done something like it in the past without getting caught. Um, so, yeah, this is uh, interesting. If we actually uh, go to, uh, I took the liberty to archive the actual discussion page. Uh, so let me post this into the um, server, the Discord server. I, I need to get in the habit of posting things, links there that we can go back to later. But anyway, so this is the actual discussion. Um, a rating of plus 20 and increasing rapidly on a first-time article in just 15 minutes. All upvotes from No Karma members created about four months ago. Yep, not suspicious. Uh, roughly 80 is actually 91. Alt accounts, all sleeper agents for four months. This dude is a fucking legend. <laughs> and um, this other person says, this is from, from a uh, uh, some sort of like discussion. Uh, the, the two people are talking about this individual, Jack. Jack is my new idol. What he's doing is wrong, but it's kind of impressive. It's like that guy who leaked the Supreme Court Justice's credit card information. Wrong? Yes. Based? Yes. So, anyway, um, there's a lot of fun commentary on here. Uh, it, it, this Dodo Devil says, It's really cool how much of an impact this article has had on people just joining the wiki. Hope they all enjoy their time here. Uh, and then Fish, to the power of 12, says, I can admire the dedication, just making... The one wiki dot account was a pain in the ass. I totally agree with that. That's uh, I, I can't imagine how much free time it would take to do all this. And um, I mean, hey, it, it's ridiculous, but it sort of stack overflows into uh, something of an impressive feat. So um, kudos, kudos to this person who did this. And uh, I think the most important thing about this is exposing. First of all, uh, how this is possible, because once again, I do think that this has been done in the past, certainly, um, by people who are a little better at keeping it um, inconspicuous. Uh, but the other thing is also a little bit of a ray of hope in that these things can be investigated. I am, I am of the belief that if we knew exactly what to investigate and who and when, uh, we would find something like this activity uh, a lot over the wiki, particularly in very important moments like uh, KCONs and things like this. But um, never has it been so blatant. Uh, I, I don't know who would have the finesse, the patience to make 91 sock accounts and then have such a lack of patience to upvote their own article 91 times in 15 minutes. Like you, you did all that work and then you just threw it away in the first 15 minutes of your article getting posted. I mean, and then someone else, I think on the staff, made a great uh, point that, you know, with this sort of uh, effort, you could have been just working on your article. I mean, you probably could have got the article good enough to get, you know, at least maybe half of these votes, a third of the votes or something like that. I mean, my God, uh, just a very interesting prioritization of energy and application in this. Anyways, so I thought that was a pretty fun note to, uh, to end on. That's kind of a crazy thing to see. All right, so we've been doing this about an hour. Uh, I do appreciate people joining into uh, this, at least to watch or maybe post uh, facto, ex post facto kind of thing. Um, I appreciate that quite a lot. Kind of a quiet show today for participation, but that is A-OK. -okay. We always have enough to talk about. Uh, I love doing it as well. So uh, this has been SCP CRP, a.k.a. Lack of Lepers. Y'all check out the Config Magazine uh, YouTube. We'll do our weekly five word synopsis of all the articles uh, that came out of the SCP Wiki this week. And, of course, uh, Tuesday night we'll be back on the Twitch just reacting. We're probably going to react to uh, Radiger's uh, recent video about uh, SCP authors being exposed. Uh, I'm kind of interested in that. So we'll, we'll, uh, that's, that's come across my desk a few times so to speak, so we will um, do that then. That should be a fun time. All right, well, I hope you have a great week. Thank you so much for listening, and check you next time in two weeks. Take it easy.